there and welcome. So in this video I'm going to look at a gear changing technique that it's very unlikely you would have been introduced to on your CBT and probably not your direct access either. Uh, this technique's used on motorcycles and it can also be used on cars as well. So if you've done an advanced motorcycling course, if you've done an advanced car course, or you're just generally into driving, riding and techniques, you probably know this technique. It's often referred to as rev matching gear changing. I'll go into it in more detail in a short while, but basically, if we sort of recap to gear changing from our direct access CBT days, when changing down the gears, you're taught that we don't change down gears to reduce speed on the motorcycle but we do change down gears as the speed reduces so in other words we're not using the gears to slow down and that's good advice because if you change to a gear that is too low for your road speed and you let your clutch out too promptly too carelessly or even if smoothly if the gears too low you run the risk of locking the rear wheel and I appreciate that some motorcycles with slipper clutches will reduce the ability to lock the rear wheel so it's a little bit of safety device built in but a lot of motorcycles don't have slipper clutches especially not if you're a new rider on smaller bikes it's very unlikely so as we train you right from the beginning smooth is good smooth is the key because what we don't want to be doing is placing the tire grip under stress from excessive forces because that's where you get a loss of control and of course the higher the speed the nastier and more unpleasant the results and strangely enough I've just used the technique there but I'll, I'll speak to you about it more in detail shortly so this technique is basically used where we wish to choose a lower gear but maintain the same road speed and if you've been watching my videos or you've watching other people's videos you may well often hear the term a more flexible gear use a flexible gear I'm going to do it here so basically what that produced me there is that I wanted a gear to give me more slowing response or acceleration response should it be desired but I didn't at that exact moment in time want to change my road speed and that's where this technique is really really useful it can also be used on very slippery road conditions where you do want to lose speed without touching your brakes but if you were to change to a lower gear prematurely you'd find that you could actually lock the back wheel and make things worse so this technique can be used to basically change to a lower gear then close the throttle and reduce your road speed I'm just going to concentrate on this junction another time that this technique might be useful for you as well is if you need to change gear on a bend so part of your basic training is if you can avoid it don't change gear on a bend and the reason we say that is we're trying to limit the amount of stresses on the tires and what you're doing whilst the motorcycle is cornering and a clumsy gear change can create instability on a motorcycle and if that motorcycle is at a lean angle and you have a clumsy gear change it can make things a lot worse the tire grip can break a lot sooner and you'll have the rear end step out mid-bend and in extreme circumstances that could of course flip the bike you know you can have a complete loss of control but reality is sometimes you do need to change gear on a bend and if you use this technique you'll find it's really helpful because it maximizes the stability so let's look into it in a little bit more detail so I'm probably generally only able to use this technique dropping one gear at a time for example I might choose to go from fourth to third or third to second right I'm in fifth gear at the moment the bikes just cruising along got a bend coming up don't want to change her speed there we go skipped to 
gears and then I start decelerating and that actually wasn't the perfect selection it wasn't matched perfectly it wasn't far off but it wasn't perfect but it achieved the technique because what I don't want to do fifth third clutch out and as it happened that was a careless deliberately careless um, use of the clutch the road speed was good for the gear so it didn't actually impact but I don't know if you heard that there, third to second. Bike didn't like it. That is a bad way of changing gear. So sometimes then we'll be in a gear, for example, fourth gear. We'll see a bend coming up and we'll decide I would rather have a third because with gentle use of the throttle, I can just maintain a bit of stability in the bend by settling the suspension in a little bit just by having a little bit of maintenance throttle and if I need to accelerate or want to accelerate out of the bend as the view opens up I've got the ability to do so or it might be that as we approach a junction it's fairly blind our speed is already sensible for the approach to the junction but the gear is such that if we tried to accelerate promptly the bike wouldn't respond rapidly to escape from danger in that case I would want to select a lower gear and that is where this technique works perfectly. So to use this technique successfully, you'd need to have a bit of an understanding and a knowledge of your, the motorcycle that you're going to be riding. You need to know roughly how the bike revs at what speed in which gear, so you can match the revs to that lower gear shift. So for example, I'm just letting the bike roll down to 30 and fourth. Now, I shut the throttle, clutch comes in, I rebalance the throttle and gently introduce the clutch. There should be no perceptible notice in change of anything. It should slip seamlessly into the correct speed. So in other words, as I let that clutch out, the revs don't rise, the revs don't fall. They're exactly where I've set the preset them with using the throttle. And the road speed stays exactly the same. So it's like I'm in third now, don't want to change my speed, pedestrian crossing and junction. Very gently made that adjustment. And there's two ways you can do this. What you might want to do is to close the throttle first, pull the clutch in, then make the gear change and whilst you miss, make the gear change, preset your revs. Or if you're very experienced and know your bike well, you might want to preset your throttle as you pull the clutch in, make the gear change, and then all you have to do is let the clutch back and seamlessly slip it in. So currently I'm just able to use acceleration sense in third gear. We see the junction there. I'm quite happy that third gear is responsive enough should I need to do anything. Like if I had to accelerate, you can see the bike will go quite nicely, thank you bend here can we accelerate out the bend no because of the junction we can't once the junction's clear we can accelerate a little bit but we're into another bend but the limit points moving away so we can see there the acceleration sense is working well however at some point we relax the engine and we naturally go up to the next gear and it's just maintaining a speed there I can see through the series of bends and at the moment fourth gear is absolutely fine I've not got a problem with that at all but what happens as the bend comes up I'm happy with the speed fourth to third up into fourth so just decelerating for the bend in fourth gear set the revs slip it gently in beautifully done and then if I need acceleration sense now just to control it for any other hazards I can do exactly that there we go third to second match rev gear change gives me a bit of flexibility through the bend and a bit more acceleration in all fairness I could have probably gone through that bend happily in third I just used that for a demonstration purpose but you get the idea Let's use it for this bend here, rolling off. Right, set the revs, clutch in. 
blend, flexibility. And of course, if I was just slowing down, the other option I've got is to match the rev change and then throttle off and you'll see the bike slows. Now this bike also has a quick shifter which means I can change up on this one and down clutchlessly. And generally speaking it's pretty smooth. However, there have been occasions that you use it and you do feel the, bolt, the back jolt a little bit. And therefore you wouldn't want to be using that technique in a bend. Whilst there's loads of electronics on this bike, I'm never going to rely on them exclusively. I'd much rather hone my techniques and try and keep myself in the game than become lazy. Because one day you'll ride a different bike and you won't have that skill. You'll have lost it because you've not polished it. I'll give you a demonstration of the quick shifter in a moment. Okay, so we're just coming up to a crossroads, throttle off, losing the speed, press the gear selector down, and again, and you see that, the bike sorted it out for me. Deliberately went for a lower gear than was ideal there, just to show you, but there was no harshness actually, because the bike got it all sorted, and I could feel there was no twitch at the rear wheel at all. If you'd have done a manual gear change like that and dumped the clutch, you'd have felt a twitch for sure. Let's ease off for the junction a little bit. Let's go for a... There we go. Revs have come up. Fourth gear there, just slowing for the junction, just that little bit. Right, let's set the speed gear, accelerate away from the hazard, and so it's quite a nice little technique when you're going to make progress in inverted commas that the advanced system likes, very very useful technique, I've done it there again, and then now because of the new hazard I just use acceleration sense to roll off the gas, third gear is good for this junction and bend, so we'll just make use of it. important to just keep everything smooth. Even though it's a lovely warm sunny day, the tyres are warm, we still want to give the tyre grip maximum bite. We don't want to upset that rear end or the front end, but particularly with gear changing we're talking about the rear. So here I'm going to close the throttle, bring the clutch in, reset some revs, reintroduce the clutch. So that's probably how I'd get you to practice if I was training you and you were brand new. I'd get you to close the throttle first and then match it. So what, I'll just come past this junction and I'll just give you a demonstration. Right, I'm gonna have a fourth. So if you leave the gas on and pull the clutch in, that's what you get, the revs will come up and you don't want that. So there's gonna have to be some form of adjustment and you do need some form of understanding about your rev range in relation to your gears, your gear ratios. Something you can experiment with as long as you're soft, as long as you're gentle. Experiment on the straights to start with, so if you get things a little bit wrong, there's no big drama. It's a very fine technique. It shouldn't be doing it at high speeds to start with. Just having that little practice. You know, if you go back to my gear changing video and then you go back to your basic training on gear changing and at advanced level we always say to you you should always be in the correct gear at the correct speed at the correct time so you just see now with a quick shifter throttle off kick down no clutch it sets you up in that lower gear warning of walkers in the road in a junction so what could we do? Well we could quick shift, throttle off, kick down to second, bike takes care of it. Fractionally lumpy there, wasn't completely smooth. I'm just going to use that second gear to, for the prevailing conditions. Then I'm going to accelerate up into third. We can see it's this slow and we're losing the view of the road already. 
So this time I'll use our rev matching technique, throttle off, that's the speed, clutch in, power, second gear, blend it in, and then just work it now on the throttle, purely for the bend and the junction that we have there to our left. Just use that acceleration sense just between the two bends there. And then we'll just come down for the 30 limit in the normal way. Reducing speed on the brakes, changing down to second, no rev matching, just making sure that the gear's correct for the road speed. So it's like here, you know, we're still on a dual carriage race, the speed limit technically is still 70 we can see that we've got a bend coming up so I'm going to lose my speed it's this slow so I'm in fifth I want third now I'm going to blend the revs into third so there I've sort of gently rev matched in fifth to third and had a lot more control there like here I'm going to go for a second I reckon so lose the speed clutch in revs up blend there we go speed unchanged and if that wasn't a 30 I could gently power away and then change up once I'd straighten the bike up 60 miles an hour so we're coming up to a bend the question is, do I just get the speed off normally and select the gear, or is it suitable for a match rev gear change? So I'm using acceleration since he's wide, so I'm braking a bit there. Here we've got a fairly tight bend, do the same again. Speed set, clutch off, set the revs, blend into second gear. little example there of a three to two just blending that in nice and smoothly flexibility here I'll use a four to three and the idea is to work to make it as seamless as you can I'll use some brakes for this one but I'll probably go for a three to two Very slight on the rev match in there, it wasn't a completely closed throttle. The relationship between the throttle and the clutch, your two hands, is very important for smoothness and control on a motorcycle. And your safety can really require that to be spot on. And when it is good, you get a much smoother ride. And for those of you that do like making progress, not only is it smoother, it's safer, and you will find there is a benefit in progress. Sure, we can make progress by being coarse and harsh, but you do reduce your safety margins by doing so. So another area where um, rev matching can be a great idea is overtaking. So here I'm following the vehicle at a sort of steady-ish speed. I'm in fourth gear, which is comfortable for this bike, just to potter around on, it's quite happy. But if an overtake were to be on and I look for it, whilst it will go, it's probably not going to be the most rapid of overtakes. So what I would generally tend to do is, like now, we've got a bend coming up, I'm going to rev match it down to third. Now I've got more flexibility, so if there's a gap there and the overtake is on, just open that view up, I could move out and put the overtake on. It's not, as it happens there is a consideration yeah we'll do that so the technique has many applications where it can do you a favor you know to start with there the overtake wasn't on I just wanted to assess it a little bit longer 
And of course, with that Ben coming up, when I decided, yeah, do you know what? I'm happy he's settled. He's not going to come across the other side of the road. So by being in that correct gear ready, it enabled me to get the overtaking quickly because the bend was coming up so I did need the quicker acceleration to get it done rapidly. Had I been in fourth, yes it's possible, yes it would have accelerated but not with the quite the same amount of enthusiasm. So I hope that technique is of some interest to you if you're not aware of it or you haven't ever used it before. If you think it would be useful for you, by all means have a practice, see how it might enhance your progress possibly, your smoothness and your safety. So until next time, ride safe and take care.